we now take a step back to look at some more places around the town centre. The bottom of Brand Street has hardly changed. But further up it has seen major rebuilding. The old Methodist chapel, seen here in low sunlight in an undated slide, has gone. As part of the deal when Sainsbury's acquired the site, a new chapel was funded in Bedford Road, combining the Brand Street Chapel, the Queen Street Congregational Chapel, and the Nightingale Road Primitive Methodist Chapel, making Christ Church, now a joint Methodist and United Reform Church, housed in today's brick structure in Bedford Road. As we just saw, the site that was Sainsbury's store has lost this mural. It's moved to the side of the library building in Old Park Road. We get a glimpse into Latchmore Court with the commemorative plinth in 1982. which has become a gated community in 2019 and the plinth has disappeared. The town hall at the top of Brant Street was opened in 1901 to replace the old town hall opposite, which had become too small. This is how it looked in 1987. After major refurbishment, joining to the adjacent building and much contractual wrangling, it finally incorporated the North Hearts Museum in 2019. At the top of Brant Street is the Friends Meeting House, seen here in 1982, and spot the difference in 2015, very little apart from the size of the trees. Turning the corner into Paynes Park we find the fire station, pictured at its opening in 1895, and in this postcard dated 1920, with the Lairidge Cattle Market entrance beyond. Here's a nice view from 1972. All gone in 2019. The new fire station is out of town on Newton Way. Moving on, we come to this frosty scene from 1970, showing the library and charnwood from the crossroads. That was replaced by a roundabout with the construction of the Park Way in 1980. Believe me, the library is somewhere behind all those trees. The building known as Charnwood was given to the town in 1937 by Ralph and Hubert Moss, sons of the original William Moss, whose grocery business had shops in Hitchin and elsewhere in the area. We saw the best-known shop at Moss's Corner earlier on. Covenants specify that the building be used for a library, museum or other public use. It opened as a library in 1939 and in 1941 the top floor opened as a museum. In later years the interior of Perks and Llewellyn's former chemist shop was displayed. The library moved into an extension in the 1960s. As I write, the fate of the original building is unknown now that the museum has moved to Brand Street. Bill goes on to show us the memorial garden to Reginald Hine, local historian and man of letters, situated at the top of Lower Tilehouse Street, which is now cut off by the 1980s roundabout. The garden was dedicated in September 1952, as seen in this picture of the official opening, conducted by the Lord Lieutenant of Hertfordshire, David Bowes Lyon. It was little changed in 2019, other than the growth of the shrubbery. Continuing where we left off earlier, here is a view of Bancroft looking north towards Hermitage Road. There's no date, but the cars suggest the early 1960s. Notice the shop opposite belonged to W. B. Moss, who opened his first shop in Hitchin in Bancroft about 1870. Virtually the same view in 1980 from Bill Palmer. Further down Bancroft in 1907, the imposing building is named as the Girls' Grammar School. 
founded in 1889 by Hitchin philanthropist Frederick Seabohm. It used this building until 1906, when it moved to the present location on Windmill Hill. Just ten years later, the ivy was growing well. Note the building on the right at the end of Hermitage Road. By 1947, it had been replaced by the half-timber shop of Abbott and & Son, and the ivy was quite rampant. Bill takes us further along, but back to 1970. I was going to say that the Skinner Arms houses at the end of Bancroft have not changed, until I saw this postcard in Jerry Tidy's collection. No date on that one, nor on this, but the fashions suggest early 1900s. Notice the buildings on the left. The distinctive roof at the far end belongs to the Adam and Eve pub. All changed in 1970 in this picture from Bill. And different again in 1985, where we get our first glimpse of the former Regal Cinema, here billed as a theatre, the scene in 2019 from further back. Now we move to the end of Bancroft and look back. The Adam and Eve is now in the foreground, and the road level was evidently lower when this was photographed. The pub was rebuilt in 1933, and after surviving a series of name changes, the Tutton Shive, the Phoenix and the Venue, it appears to have closed permanently in 2019. Built in the modern style, the Regal Cinema opened in 1939. Closed as a cinema in 1977, it reopened as a studio and concert venue in 1980. But by 1986, the site was occupied by this office block, which houses a doctor's surgery. Here viewed from the other side. At the end of Bancroft is the recreation ground. This postcard from 1934 shows the pool, a shelter and the bandstand in the distance. Bill managed to stand in exactly the same spot on a frosty morning in 1970. Turning east into Nightingale Road, we come to Frith Cottages. Bill pictured these possibly in 1989 or 90. By 2019, only the shrubbery had changed. The Church of Our Lady Immaculate and St Andrew on the corner of Grove Road was built in 1901. A replacement was built on an adjacent plot, and the building remains as the parish hall. The church is in the distance as we look back towards Starlings Bridge in Bill's picture from the 1990s. The shop fronts were different in 2019. What was not in the previous picture is the Woolpack pub, demolished in 2008. The brick dwellings on the left occupy its site. Myatt's Woodwind Shop was an old established business in Nightingale Road on the corner of King Street. There was a shop on both sides. Further down, Cherry's Hardware Store, with the petrol pumps outside, was another long-standing Hitchin business. Myatt's was in process of conversion into a residence in 2019. Cherry's disappeared years before. Before we arrive at the station, let's step back both in space and time to this shot of the junction of Queen Street, Hermitage Road on the left and Walsworth Road in front. The date is given as 1961. No traffic lights and the corner building is residential at ground level. In 2019 the road is full of traffic islands, lights, signs and the building opposite is now in retail use. The circular thatched cottage at number 1 Walsworth Road has long fascinated photographers. There are numerous postcards showing it through the ages. This one from 1915 includes a farmer struggling to drive his cattle along the road. Bill's early photo, dated 1947, concentrates on the road. Bill revisited the scene later and we can see that the thatch has given way to tiles. By 2019, there were railings and the shrubs had grown.
Slightly further towards the station, Bill looked back towards Windmill Hill on a frosty morning, with this view of the entrance to the former Woodside Theatre. The gateway was still there in 2019, but the theatre had gone many years before. Founded in 1869, Walsworth Road Baptist Church started as a mission to railway workers by members of Tilehouse Street Church. An imposing church hall was built early in the 20th century. Bill took this picture in 1975. In 2008, the church commissioned the glazed link lobby to join the two buildings, seen here in 2019. Here, at the junction with Highbury Road, the obligatory group of children gather to stare into the lens. No traffic to endanger the photographer. Fortunately, in 2019, a traffic island gave a safe place to stand to take the picture. A slight diversion into Ratcliffe Road brings us to Holy Saviour Church. Built and endowed by the Reverend George Gainsford to serve the rapidly growing part of town near the railway station. Seen here shortly after completion. It was consecrated on Ascension Day in 1865. To cope with larger congregations than expected, two aisles were added in the 1880s, giving the frontage seen in Bill Palmer's undated photo. The odd wedge-shaped building at the corner of Dacre Road was where Thomas Brooker set up his ironmonger's shop in 1876. Here the staff paraded outside for a photographer. The two boys in the photo are Arthur and Tom Brooker, who later made the firm one of Hitchin's largest businesses. The original intention was to add another story, but that never happened, as you can see. By 2019, the building was home to a purveyor of designer spectacles. We joined the route we left earlier by going into the railway station forecourt. The station on the Great Northern Railway opened with the line in August 1850. A dramatic increase in the number of passengers caused the alterations of the building and this imposing canopy. The buildings were little altered in 1975, though the canopy had been removed as a danger to the public. By 2019 there was much greater cycle storage and the car park was much improved and extended. Notice the huge bicycle racks on the left a reflection of the massive increase in commuters. Not seen is the enormous extension to the car park beyond the station buildings on the right. The Exide advert on the Cambridge Road railway bridge was a long-standing feature. Not so many posters in 2019, and the bridge now only carries a height warning. It was a glorious autumn day when Bill Palmer went down Cambridge Road, Although it was autumn when I went down in 2019, the leaves hadn't turned. We're looking through the trees at the River Purwell. The path goes along the river bank to Walsworth Common Recreation Ground. Opened in 1806, the pub alongside the river was originally named The Ship, in anticipation of a proposed canal extension to Hitchin. Renamed the Mill Stream in later years, though it's some distance upstream from the actual site of Purwell Mill. Recent redecorations have left it looking like this. A vestige of the nautical theme is retained by labelling the site covered area Boathouse. The area alongside the river is called Walsworth, and it looked like this in an undated postcard, probably from the turn of the 20th century. Bill captured some children optimistically netting in the river in 1970. The inn opposite the bridge was named the Sailor Boy in similar nautical anticipation. Here it is again in Bill's photo from 1978. All things must pass, the building is now a shop. 
the riverbank has been allowed to naturalise to encourage species diversity. The thatched cottage further along from the sailor boy has been a shop attached to a farm in its time. As can be seen here from 1978. Returned to being a private dwelling in 2019, whilst the shop is visible just down the road. At the Cambridge Road end of Woolgrove Road is St Faith's Church. Built in 1894 as an Anglican church, it's seen here in 1970. Hardly changed by 2019, but it's now a joint Anglican-Methodist ecumenical partnership. The church is viewed from slightly further back, looking across Franklin's Gardens. The Provident Mutual Insurance Building on the corner of Purwell Lane can be seen here in 1970. By 2019 the growth of the trees and houses built prevent us from seeing that the Provident Mutual, after spending some time housing parts of North Hearts College, has been swept away to be replaced by these blocks of flats. Further along Cambridge Road, this field acted as a showcase for roses grown by Harkness Roses, making a pleasant outing on a summer afternoon. It's now been turned back into being a meadow. We finish our visit to the east of Hitchin with Purwell Mill. This photograph by Francis Coombe appears in a book introduced by Hitchin historian Reginald Hine, undated but probably 1940s. Bill Palmer photographed it in 1975 and it remains virtually unchanged to this present day. The slight sequence returns now to nearer the town centre with views up Highbury Road through the girls' school gates. The main building remains the same as on this undated postcard. The school moved from Bancroft to this site in 1906. There have been many additions to the buildings over the years, some since this photo was taken by Bill Palmer in 1970. The next topic in our tour is Hitchin's Market, which has been held in the town for many centuries. This view across the market square dates from the early 1900s. Seen again in about 1930, the Corn Exchange, with its distinctive lantern on the roof, appears in both these pictures. Opened in 1853 for the benefit of local farmers and grain merchants, it remains an iconic part of Hitchin's townscape, though corn ceased being exchanged here many years ago. The market itself moved to St Mary's Square in 1939 at the outbreak of World War II, and thereafter the market square became a car park. This view from the 1960s leads us neatly onto the next slide in Bill Palmer's collection, showing the 1960 market in progress in St Mary's Square. A bustling scene viewed across the river from St Mary's Lawn. The stall spread all along the river bank and covered the upper area which forms the present day car park. The crowd is watching this trader who's tempting them with the latest piece of technology, a transistor radio. The 1970s saw the old surroundings to the biggin swept away and the new market area created, seen here in 1977. This view from 1962 looks down the River His towards the Hermitage Hall. In 2018, the view is obscured by the new buildings in Port Mill Lane, including the Premier Inn. We've come to the end of Bill Palmer's tour of Hitchin, old and new. We started with this postcard and promised that you'd see most of the scenes. We've seen the High Street and the Market, the Walsworth area with its thatched cottage, and the Sailor Boy, and also the Corn Exchange. 
But what about this seeming interloper, the avenue Stevenage? There is such a thing, but it's a footpath, and it was lined with enormous chestnut trees at the time of the postcard. However, the image on the postcard looks a lot like this, which is the avenue Hitchin. Hmm, and it looked like this in 2019. And what of Chapman's Yard? Well, this is what Chapman's Yard looked like in 1926. This photograph, held in North Hearts Museum, often appears as an example of the worst sort of slum housing. Not surprising, then, that it totally disappeared during the Queen Street clearance in the 1930s, and modern blocks like these have sprung up over the years in its place. And so we finish where we started with the Royal Manor of Hitchin, displayed on the town war memorial in the churchyard.